This is a Glendale Library Arts and Culture program created for and featuring teens, edited and hosted by the teen library staff. Hi everyone, this is Melissa and Desiree. Welcome to the guest episode of Teen Gen Talks. Today's guest currently serves as Arts and Culture Administrator with the City of Glendale's Library, Arts and Culture Department and works directly with the Arts and Culture Commission to oversee programmatic initiatives of the Urban Art Program. Prior to working with the City of Glendale, she has held previous roles with Arts for LA, Core Theatre Foundation, the Unusual Suspects Theatre Company, and the LA Opera. She has received her BA in American Literature and Culture with a minor in theatre from UCLA. Grab a snack and drink and let's welcome Jennifer Fukutami Jones to the Teen Gen Talks. Yay! Yay. So thank you Jennifer for taking the time out of your day to talk with us. We have a lot to discuss. So let's get um, right into the interview. You received your uh, BA in American Literature and Culture with a minor in theater from UCLA. So what made you choose this major and minor? Sure, so uh, to backtrack a little bit, I went to uh, Franklin High School, which is right across the, the two freeway from Glendale. So I was always mm -hmm. coming into Glendale, very familiar with the city. So I'm very excited to be, to be working here. Mm -hmm. um, so from Franklin, I actually, when I was in high school, believe it or not, I wanted to be a lawyer um, because I was told I could write pretty well or decently well. And I had family members who had been lawyers. I was like, okay, great. That sounds like a lucrative <laughs> career where I could make money and okay, let's try that. So uh, when I went to college, um, I believe I was undecided at the time. And uh, I, it was, I think, my freshman year when I did a, a cluster. It was called Clusters at the time at UCLA, where you could try performing arts. And it was like a 101 on dance and music and culture. Um, and it just really spoke to me. And I really love the idea of finding that major that could could release that kind of interest and passion of mine. Mm -hmm. um, so UCLA had specifically different categories. It was like you know, English literature, American literature and culture. And I felt very excited and to learn about uh, American literature and culture. So I had the opportunity to study specifically American writers and, um, you know, the Chicano, Chicano history movement and, and everything that had happened within um, the American kind of cultural uh, diaspora. So that's what kind of led me to that major. What did you want to do with your major after college? You know, unfortunately, there I, there's not a lot for me to do with an American literature and culture major. <laughs> In, incredibly specific, um, but I was lucky enough to uh, have volunteered at different organizations. Uh, one of the places that I volunteered with when I was, uh, I think, a junior or senior in college was LA Opera. Um, and I highly recommend anybody who's interested in, it doesn't have to be arts per se, but if you have a passion, um, whether it's food justice, social justice, the arts, or whatever it might be, I highly recommend to just ask if you can volunteer uh, at that organization just to learn more about it. So I volunteered at LA Opera. Um, and then when I was graduating out of college, they were they had a part-time position open in their education and community programs department. Um, and so I applied for it and I got it. And that kind of led to a different career path um, because I thought I was going to really focus on the performing arts, you know, being in it, being part of the creative process. Um, but I think what a lot of people don't know, or at least I didn't know when I was in high school or college, is that there's a whole huge career path behind the scenes, right, of arts, ad, arts administration. So it's like, yeah, you see the dancers or the musicians or whatever on stage, but there's tons of people behind the scenes that make everything possible, whether it's the production people who are hanging the lights or it's the, you know, administrative staff who helps with contracts or, or you know, gaining the money, you know, develop, development and finance. So um, that was a great kind of entryway into how I kind of got started in my career was this like behind the scenes, which I didn't know even existed. For a teen or anyone who wants to major or is thinking about pursuing American literature and culture, what is some advice that you would give them? I would say just be really open to different possibilities. Um, I know for me, I was, you know, in high school, I was set on, you know, I want to be a lawyer. I want to, uh, English was a, a good kind of entryway major. Um, but just be open to different possibilities and things that may happen. Um, you never know what you can be good at that you don't know that you're good at, right? Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things that that came up for me when I was in college or when I was starting with this job with LA Opera 
was that, um, yeah, I like the creative side and it, it fed my own passions for my creativity, but um, I was also really detailed and organized. And I was that kid that like loved getting the new notebooks, right? That you start <laughs> and oh, I got a new notebook, you know, it's so clean and fresh. And this is my, you know, my math binder, my English binder. Like I was just always super organized and that really fed into that kind of thing that I didn't know was a strength, right? Um, in administration. So I would just say be open. You might have a career path or a specific career or job in mind, but just be open to the possibilities. So throughout your career, um, what has been your favorite program that you have coordinated? Oh, that's so hard. <laughs> that's like choosing a child. Oh, man. It's, you know, I've had really great opportunity to work with so many different um, organizations, really wonderful organizations. And uh, each one I could say was a favorite in a different way. Um, I, I could like briefly talk about <laughs> each one if, if, if that's okay. Cause like, I can't choose. Yeah, um, yeah. uh, when I worked with LA Opera, I worked with the education and community programs department. And one of my big projects was a, a thing called the cathedral project where uh, we produced a large opera at the city of Our Lady of the, city of Our Lady of the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels in downtown LA. And um, there was about 500 community members that was uh, that I organized, uh, me, uh, orchestra members, community chorus, things like that. So that to me was like my first entry way to like community engagement and bringing people together. Um, and it was beautiful to see, you know, little babies who were like five performing with people who were like mm -hmm. 90. Um, and it was a free performance and that was a great experience. Um, I worked with the Unusual Suspects Theater Company for a little bit, and I say that was one of the, the best and the hardest jobs I ever had because um, it was really working with underserved youth and communities, and we did playwriting and performance programs, and I absolutely loved, loved, loved working with uh, the kids and the community members. We, we put on uh, original plays and playwriting performances. Um, but it was also the hardest because I would take the stories and the kids home with me every night, you know, and I would think about them and, and take them home with me. But that was another highlight. Um, I also worked at the, the Ford theaters in Hollywood and I did a program called jam sessions where again, it was a community engagement, uh, opportunity where we did, uh, salsa, tango, taiko drum classes, uh, all around LA County and they were free. And again, it was that, that, the intergenerational opportunity to see people engaging together, um, and then now it's, it's, I'm doing really f interesting and fun things with Glendale. So I, I can't choose. It's so, it's so hard. <laughs> I really love the work. It's, it's been, it's been fantastic. What is your typical work day as an arts and culture administrator for Glendale? It's not a nine to five per se. It's, it's very much, uh, working with artists. I get the opportunity, which I love to talk to artists, work with artists, um, talk about their process, talk about, uh, how to produce their their artwork in the space. Um, another big part of my job is working with the Arts and Culture Commission. So, um, I, you know, I prepare meeting agendas and packets and minutes for the, the commission. And we have our monthly commission meeting once a month. Um, so it's a lot of like uh, administrative duties, but also I love the part of getting to engage and talk with artists. So it's been a, a, a real big pleasure of mine. So you have shared with us some photos, including Beyond the Box mural art program, 365 Days of Voters, and the exhibit at the Adams Square Mini Park Gas Station. Can you talk a little bit more about these um, programs and exhibitions? Sure, absolutely. So uh, the Beyond the Box mural art program is something that uh, the Arts and Culture Commission has been doing, I believe, since 2014. Um, and at this point, I think we have almost close to 200 utility boxes painted within the city. Um, so it's been a really fantastic program as, a, as an entryway to kind of gauge people's interest in the arts in, in Glendale. Um, right now, the application's open. So if you, anybody listening or watching uh, are, are interested muralists or artists or painters, please apply. Uh, the application is due September 18th at five o'clock. Um, we're going to be painting 30 utility boxes this uh, season. It's going to be wow. the weekend of October 16 through 18. There's a $750 stipend. So if you're chosen as one of the artists, there's a $750 stipend. Um, and the, the theme this year is celebrating our cultural communities. So we're really looking for artworks that speak to the, the various rich cultures of Glendale. So um, that's the Beyond the Box program. Um, one of the other photos that I listed was for the Adams Square Mini Park gas station. So 
Um, in if you're not familiar with Adams Hill, there's a really cute, lovely uh, gas station park gas station that's a, a retro um, from the 1930s gas station. Um, and we have the opportunity with the Arts and Culture Commission to produce exhibits in that space. Um, it's basically a, a glass box, or, or, or um, we live in, we call it the glass, the glass aquarium. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's a great space. It's a great space to, to install your work or showcase your work. And um, we've been doing that for quite a long time too, but we um, the application is open all year round and we do an artist selection committee generally in spring, March of the year. And we ideally program out the year. So right now our, ex our exhibits are programmed for the rest of the year. Um, but please, if anyone's interested in showcasing their art, we'd love to have student art, youth art uh, showcased in that space. Um, and you can find more information at uh, glendaartsandculture.org, but that's an ongoing application. And if you're chosen, it's a thousand dollar stipend. So even better. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and your uh, your exhibit will be up for approximately six weeks. So it's a really great opportunity to share your artwork with the, the community and beyond. Um, and I'm trying to think of the other, oh, the Art Happens Anywhere was another photo that I included. Um, that's a program, that application just closed, but actually that was in response to um, everything that's been happening with COVID-19 and the global pandemic has really devastatingly hit not only the whole community, but the arts and culture community specifically. Um, there's been so many artists, musicians um, who have been impacted greatly financially uh, due to COVID-19. So this was the commission's response in to how we can best support these artists during this difficult time, right? Um, and so the application I believe opened in May and it just closed on August 31st. Uh, and I think we got over 170 applications for the whole wow. process. Um, and so it's been really great. The, the commission uh, originally had allocated $100,000 for the program and then they doubled it, more than doubled it. So now it's uh, the project budget is $210,000. Wow. Um, so it's really great to see and inspiring to see the commission's support of the arts um, in Glendale. Uh, right now, we have 10 projects that have been funded so far. And again, you can find more information at glendoartsandculture.org. Um, but the projects are really, really interesting. Like, it's so great to see uh, what artists have created in this time, this difficult time. It's been really inspiring. Um, just as an example, one of them is called uh, With Love from LA, and that's from uh, a musician, artist, event producer, Mark DeClive Lowe. Um, and he's doing kind of something similar like this, where he's um, doing an in-conversation with uh, musicians in LA County and an in-concert performance. So those are going to be streamed uh, on, uh, on YouTube Live, and it's a really great opportunity to learn about uh, local musicians in LA County. Um, but yeah, it's it's been really fantastic to, to be able to work with the commission on these various projects. And I hope that some of the people listening and watching can consider it in the future. You have partnered with the LA County Arts Internship Program, which is an annual program that provides paid internships for undergraduates interested in the arts and culture sector. Can you talk a little bit about this opportunity? Yes, absolutely. So this is, everything is my favorite. I know I, I'm sounding like, like I can't choose, but this, this program is, is one of the, the best programs I think that LA County has done. I think it's been in existence, gosh, since the 90s. So it's been around for a long time, but the impetus or the, the start of it was really the opportunity or the importance of having emerging leaders in the arts, specifically college students or college age students, the opportunity to have a paid internship. And paid is the key word because so many times in our field, <laughs> in the arts nonprofit <laughs> field, um, it's an unpaid internship. But the county, which I think is fantastic, really advocated for the fact that it would be a paid internship because it's time that uh, these students are developing their skills and putting in towards the, the organization. Um, so I've been working with this program, I wanna say for about eight or 10 years, or a long time. And it's always been so wonderful to, to meet emerging leaders, college students who are interested in dipping their toe um, to see what arts administration is like, right? The application generally used to be a, a summer internship program, 10 weeks, July through June through August. Um, and you would be part of a larger uh, 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 internship group because the, the county offers about 
I want to say 210 paid internships all throughout LA County. Um, so it's really great because the students become part of a cohort. Uh, you're, you're meeting and networking with other people. Um, and then you're also split into smaller, what they're calling peer groups. So based on your theme, um, there's like arts education, arts and social justice, preparing for the workforce. Uh, you're in a group of about 15 to 20 interns and you really get to know those people really well. Um, and you can engage and you attend at meetings and events based on your theme. So I highly, highly recommend it for anybody who's interested uh, of that age or who's going into college or who's in college uh, to really check it out because it's a really great entry level way to, to seeing that this might be a career opportunity for you. Um, and many times with um, interns who, who, who are in the program, they end up getting hired by the host organization. Mm. So it's also a really great way to, to start your career. So you're also a peer group leader for LA County Arts. How did you become one? I became one, again, it was an, another thing of, I had been participating in the program for so long and I just kind of kept bugging the staff. And I was like, how do I do this? I want to do this. I, I like it. I like working with the interns. I think I'd be fun. Can I do it? Um, and so I think they just got tired of me. <laughs> uh, they were like, oh my God, finally, Jennifer, just do it. Um, no, but it's, it's, it's been a really great process. I think this is the third year that I've been a peer group leader. Um, and my specific uh, theme this year is arts education. Mm -hmm. So um, it's really focused on, uh, unfortunately, like I said, due to COVID, the, we, I don't have a specific uh, peer group of students. Um, so it's kind of like, this is your theme and anybody who's interested in your theme can come and attend events. So all of the events that I was planning to have in person are now uh, via Zoom, they're all online. Mm -hmm. Um, so we have an event coming up, or I have an event coming up on February, I believe, 9th. Oh, I should have remembered this. <laughs> <laughs> I can send you details if anyone's interested. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, I believe it's February 9th at 1 o'clock, uh, but it's going to be a Zoom meeting, and it's a panel discussion with uh, different various arts education leaders in the community to talk about uh, what what is arts education and, and how is the system in which we change it, right? Um, so one of the speakers is gonna be Kayla Cannon, who's a, the librarian up at Brand oh. uh, Library. She's gonna be a panelist to talk about arts education pa uh, partnerships. And then we have uh, Natalie Marrero, who's the executive director of Congo Kids. Uh, and she's gonna talk about arts education, literally the practitioners, um, because they work uh, very, very well with um, students in the classroom with their, their dance program. Um, and then I'm waiting to confirm the third uh, panelist, but ideally it's gonna be someone from the Glendale School Board, uh, who's gonna talk about what the actual system is uh, within arts education. And we'd love to invite anybody who's listening or interested in the, the discussion. Again, I can <laughs> send you the information in the link once we have it all ready to go. Um, but we'd love to have people participate, uh, whoever is interested, so I can send more information about that. So what's your favorite part about being a peer group leader and has it taught you anything? Oh my gosh, it's taught me that I, I still need to learn, right? <laughs> um, it, it's, it's incredibly impressive to see uh, how how eloquent and how woke and how well spoken um, these interns are, uh, and and last year my my theme was arts and social justice, so I had some really really uh, inspiring uh, students and interns in my group. Um, but I think that the best thing is just getting to know these young leaders um, and getting the opportunity to, however I can, if I can, provide some guidance or some help. I love being a connector. I love connecting people and or with organizations or, or people who, who might be able to help with your career path. Um, but I think the best thing, yeah, has just been engaging and learning from these young people who who are just so much more on it and woke than I am. <laughs> so it, it's just it's just like wow, you know, it's so inspiring to see these young leaders uh, blossom. So that's been the best part is to to learn from them really. So before we end, we have some rapid fire questions. What is your favorite color? Color? Oh, I think probably red, <laughs> like a maroon. <laughs> <laughs> so someone told us you won an Emmy. What was that like? And what was uh, it like winning an Emmy? I don't know who told you that. I, I do. I don't know who told you that. Um, 
And you know, it was very anticlimactic, believe it or not. Um, it's the Los Angeles area Emmy, but I, I won it for as an associate producer for a thing called the LA County Holiday Celebration, which is a three hour live television show that we did uh, at the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion on Christmas Eve. Another thing I highly recommend watching, <laughs> if, you, if you have nothing to do on Christmas Eve, just have it on in the background, a lot of great music and dance. Um, but to be very honest, the, the Emmy sat in a box in my closet for many years. <laughs> it, it collected dust for a long time just because I'm not really the awards kind of person. Um, and then I came to Glendale and I had an office and I was like, oh, I guess I should put it in the office. Um, so so now it's in the office and then no one sees it anyway. <laughs> it's coming to the office anyway. So I wish it could be a more uh, a fun story, but it's actually very anticlimactic. <laughs> what is some advice that you wish you would have known when you were younger? Oh, many things. Um, actually, I wish I would have known more about what the library offers, to be quite frank. <laughs> Um, you know, uh, growing up in Highland Park, there was maybe one library and it wasn't that fantastic. Um, and then I, I think I was in college when I discovered Central Library in downtown LA with the LA Public Library. And I was like, oh my God, these kind of things exist? <laughs> uh, because we, it was our small little neighborhood library, right? Um, and then now, you know, working in Glendale at Central Library, it's a completely been amazing to find that that avenue because for me it was it was so exciting to come when I came for my interview uh specifically central library how much it is as a as a community hub where everybody comes and everybody comes to engage whether it's the maker space and you're tinkering and you're you know doing the cricket machines or sewing or the sound space and you're trying to you know start your demo learn about audio equipment or a flex space where you're trying to learn about social justice issues or even the immigration services um it's so impressive to me what the, what the library does, and I wish I would have known more about that uh, when I was uh, in high school, because I think I missed some opportunities <laughs> that I would have really enjoyed. Uh, so check out your library, your local library. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite dish to cook? Oh, that's hard. Um, let's see. You know, to be quite frank, my, my I'm not the cook. My husband is the, the baker and the cook, so it's kind of like, whatever's for dinner i'm happy to jump in uh and eat whatever um hmm you know we used to make these really good can i can i do it like a baking thing mm -hmm. yeah instead okay because our family is more of a, a baker or a thing actually no i have one i have one our family really loves breakfast i don't know if everybody else is like that but we love breakfast and i will say although i'm not a cook the one thing that i can do well is blueberry pancakes oh. um and that, that I could do from scratch. I like to, to spake the time and I, I kind of perfected it. So <laughs> at least my husband says he won't order blueberry pancakes uh, at a restaurant because he <laughs> likes mine. Uh, but I can't do anything else, but I can make blueberry pancakes. <laughs> um, who is your favorite Disney character? Oh, you're having all these hard questions. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you know, if it counts right now, I will I will pull up my, I don't know if you can see it, my water bottle. Can you see it? Oh, yeah, has the Baby you. Yoda. And then this other side has Mandalorian with like him holding Baby Yoda. Um, so that's probably my favorite right now. I'm, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. Uh, and the Mandalorian has just totally sucked me in and Baby Yoda. So yes. I think for right now, it'll, it'll be Baby Yoda is my favorite Disney character. So what is your favorite Disney movie? Oh, man, that's all hard. Um, you know what's on all the time right now at our house because my daughter loves it is Moana. Um, and I'll, I have to say, like, I, I grew up with the, the age of Beauty and the Beast, Little Mermaid. I would say probably Lion King was one of my favorites as well. But watching Moana... I'm hearing the music <laughs> every, every day, all day. Um, it's actually, it's, I, I love Moana because it's the strong female character. Um, there was no question that she was going to take over the village and be the next leader of the village. She's tough. She's funny. Um, she's just like a really strong female character. And I feel like, you know, that if I'm going to have a, a movie playing for my daughter, I, I think it's, it's great to be a strong female lead and also a, a woman of color to be quite frank. 
um, to see herself reflected because uh, <laughs> my daughter's half black. So she kind of looks like Moana in a way. <laughs> she's got the curly hair. Um, so she's always like, I think that's partially why she uh, uh, really likes Moana. But that that's, I would say, one of my favorites right now. If you could visit any place in the world, what place would it be? We another thing that came to mind is um, my so my husband was a, was a military brat and he uh, was actually uh, his family lived in many parts of the United States and around the world so he my husband is actually born in Morocco oh. um, in Kenitra although he's an American citizen and for years and years and years we've been saying oh wouldn't it be great to go to Morocco wouldn't it be great to go to Morocco uh, and of course we were trying to plan that for this year because this is a, a big birthday for him and then of course COVID happened and that didn't happen um, so I'd love to go to Morocco um, I think that's not a common thing that people would say but I, I'd love to go and see where he was born and just visit Morocco and also this is a very random nerd point in me which I will share <laughs> because I'm being vulnerable um is I'm a huge classic film nerd mm -hmm. and if have you heard, heard of uh, Casablanca Casablanca takes place in Morocco yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's another reason why I'd love to go to Morocco <laughs> just because the the nerd in me wants to see where the film took place <laughs> what does success for you mean right now Oh, success is just completing the day. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, there's a, I'm looking at it right now. I, I found a quote on, online and it said, productivity should not be the end all. Don't be productive, be intentional. And I have that right where uh, we work um, because it's, it's so easy to get caught up in being um, set on getting this goal or making sure I, I do this or do that or whatever. But if you're intentional in what you're doing and setting that that intention for the day or the week or the month or the year I think that to me is successful to be intentional um what show are you currently watching oh what did we <laughs> um I've watched this many times but my husband has not seen it um is a uh, Parks and Rec we just started watching again oh my god yeah I love that show I and love that's that. That's like one of my all time favorites. And that was a thing that I watched because my husband and I have very different tastes sometimes. Mm -hmm. He's like the zombie killer, you know, evil vampire, like, <laughs> like that sci fi person. And then I'm more of the funny, you know, uh, sitcom kind of person. So uh, we started re watching that last night and I was just dying because it's <laughs> just it's so funny um, and so relatable in many ways. Um, so Parks and Rec, or we, I am re watching. Uh, what else did we watch recently? <laughs> we watched a um, a Korean. I don't know if anyone's familiar with uh, Korean or romantic dramas. Oh or... my god, I love them. Really? <laughs> I oh love my god. Them. Oh, I have okay. a list for you, girl. Um, so my, do you have Netflix? Yes. yes. Okay. Have you seen Crash Landing on you? Yes, I did. What did you think? We just watched that. I kind of cried. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. think, no, but I really liked it. I really, I really enjoyed it. And I did um, also watch, um, oh my God, It's Okay to Not Be Okay. I don't know oh, if you watched that. I no. definitely recommend that one. Okay. That Is that one, on Netflix too? Yeah, it's on Netflix okay. too. And that one, I think, yeah, that one's more, I don't know. It's just, it was really well done. Yeah. It's okay not to be okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't want to give it away in case people do watch it or Melissa, if you decide <laughs> to watch it. Um, <laughs> But like the first, is it like 16 episodes or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like was, yeah. yeah, I was all in for like maybe the first 10 episodes. And then I was like, yeah. Um, but the first part I think is is worth watching. Yeah. If, if you like that kind of uh, show. What is a book that you have read recently or are currently reading that you would recommend? Yeah, so if if you haven't read Becoming by Michelle Obama, highly recommend. The audio book I highly recommend as well. Um, but a book that I recently, and I'm ashamed to say I didn't read as an as American Lit and Culture major, uh, was East of Eden by John Steinbeck. And um, normally, for again, I'm not going to put LAUSD education down, but normally <laughs> for some high schools, East of Eden was a required reading, and it just wasn't for, for the high school that I went to. Um, but, you know, as I got to know people more and more, East of Eden kept coming up. And I was like, what, what is this book that everyone keeps talking about? Many people say it's their favorite book. 
Um, and so I think after, honestly, the fourth or fifth person told me it was their favorite book, I was like, okay, I, I just I have to read this book. Um, so I borrowed it from the library, from Central Library, <laughs> uh, before COVID. And finally, it's a decent big book. I think it's 500 pages book. Um, finally finished it uh, and loved it. If you are a fan of, um, it's just so beautifully written. Um, and, and if you love California and if you love, you know, Northern California and the Salinas Valley, he described it so beautifully and eloquently. And it's a story of two brothers and two families and how those families engage and interact and intertwine. Um, but just a really classic piece of literature and highly recommend people read it. Thank you so much, Jennifer. We learned a lot about you. Thank you for taking the time of your day to talk with us. Can you let everyone at home know where they can connect with you and about upcoming projects? Sure. So I would recommend uh, visiting glendaleartsandculture.org. There's so many things that I highly recommend people find out and consider applying to, like we mentioned earlier. Um, and you can, of course, email me. My email is jfjones at glendaleca.gov. Happy to answer any questions anyone may have. Yay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Did you enjoy this episode? If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe to the Glendale Library Arts and Culture channel. Tune in every Friday at 4.30 for Teen Gen Talks. And if you would like to contact us and be part of the Teen Gen Talks, please email us at teengentalks at glendaleca.gov. <laughs> Thank you. See you next episode. Bye. Bye.